Hello, and welcome to part 7 of Building Minecraft in Unity, and this is going to be all about mountains. So first things first, this is where we left off. Um, I've made it so that the height of this land is higher than the brushes. So you can see that the brushes are all down here. But I just wanted to show you that the height is flat. And that's the problem here. We have a very flat environment, and we don't want that. We want to have mountains and such. So what we're going to do is we're going to make mountains, and I'll show you how to do that. How to do that uh, in the first most basic method, and later on we'll get into more advanced methods. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your chunk fab and make sure that your height is high enough, at least 50, so that you don't have to worry about hitting the top of your world. Then what we need to do is we need to define uh, the kinds of terrain that we want. So here in chunk, I'm going to go ahead and say public enum terrain type equals, oh, not equals, just there we are, uh, lowlands, highlands, and mountains. And then here, we're going to go ahead and go uh, terrain type, terrain type equals get terrain for position, uh, sorry, transform.position.x, transform.position.z. That xy thing screws me up again here, so I have to be careful to remember that it's actually a z, not a y. And then we say switch terrain type, case, terrain type dot highlands. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a lowlands. We'll go ahead and from lowest to highest, and we just say uh, uh, ground height equals 8. Break. Braca. Real. I'll get it right someday. And then we just do that again for the other two. Hey, good. Uh, there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and make it 12. And we'll go ahead and make this 30. So, shall we see what that looks like? Oh, that's right. I forgot to actually make this function. It's a static function, just like the other one, because whenever we need to define something that's going to be requested by a neighbor, you have to make sure it's static. You saw me make the Y mistake there? All right, and we use the same seed setting system say that 10 times fast uh, and then we just return terrain type mathf.floor to int random.value times 3 and that'll get us a random piece of terrain now let's see how that looks so you can see that we've got some lowlands we've got some mountains and we got some highlands but all the brushes are still down here at the wrong sh at the wrong space. So let's go ahead and fix that. In order to fix that, we need to pass the brushes a terrain type. Easy enough. That means we need a terrain type. Easy enough. So now over here in brush, let's go ahead and add that in. And now we can just cut and paste. Now this is a really bad practice because it actually creates a system where we do have to change both if we change one. So later on we're going to be abstracting this out. But I want to get this done in less than 15 minutes. There we are. Uh, sorry, it goes here. Otherwise it'll be after we've assigned the position, which is no good. As you can see, the brushes are all now at the right height. And we're getting some kind of interesting stuff going on here. It's kind of interesting. Now, what we're going to end up doing in the long run is we're going to end up having different brushes depending on the, the size. So, for example, we're going to have two or three brushes when we're, well, more like three or four brushes when we're at the lower, lower levels. And then at the mountains, we're going to have a lot of brushes, and we're going to scale them from lowest possible level up to the surface, rather than just trying to cluster them all at the surface. Uh, one thing I am going to go ahead and change is I'm going to go ahead and make a new brush type. Um, and what it is, is it going to be specifically for our mountains. And this is just to show you that you can do this. And later on, we'll be actually splitting our brushes up into clusters of brush packs 
for each terrain and biome type. Uh, but that's not we're not ready to do that yet. Uh, so we're not going to be ready to do that for a while. So here we'll just say if terrain type equals mountains block equals zero. And all that does is it makes it so that every single piece of uh, uh, thing in a mountain, every single brush in a mountain is going to be erasing rather than adding in specific sizes. And what that means is that our mountains are going to be uh, rocky and chunky like this. Now we do have a problem here where we have these cliffs and you don't really want those cliffs. So there are a couple of ways to get rid of the cliffs. The easiest way is that instead of using the uh, height assignment as a flat value, you shape it. So on our mountain we would say, well, we got a 30 here, but as we slope over here, we got to go down towards the 18 that we've got down here. And then you can rely on the detail brushes to form cliffs and so on. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So over here in chunk, we've got this assigning height and this no longer uh, works for us. We need to have a completely different method of assigning height. So let's comment this out. I guess I gotta do it again later. And instead we're going to go ahead and create an array of terrain types. So we need to have terrain type terrain types equals, come on, types equals new terrain types 9. And then we're going to go ahead and fill that array in the same way that we fill this, right here. Well, in that case, I guess it's a little bit easier if we do a two-dimensional array that's three by three rather rather than that. So that's okay. It's, it's okay. Either way is fine. Uh, so then we say terrain types uh, dx plus one, dz plus one, equals get terrain four dar and then we delete that and we put this off in its own function which will actually be one of the basic things we do to keep this from getting crazy And then over here in land brush, we're just going to take a minor detour and uh, destroy this and just say ground height equals chunk dot get ground height. Come on, get ground height terrain type. And that way we won't have to modify it here when we modify it over in chunk. All right, so actually we also need a default just so that we always return a value. So we now have uh, here, we now have all of the, I guess we need to have the map above this. Uh, otherwise we'll be printing onto an uninitialized map, which would be a bad idea. So now we have the terrain type for us and all of our neighbors. And it's just a matter of changing this out for something which takes into account the height of all of your neighbors. So um, although I did it like this, it turns out that I don't actually want to do that or else I'll be calling the get terrain type I get get ground height function over and over and over. So after all of that, I'm going to go ahead and make this an int. Or sorry, a float. And then you say get ground get ground height get turn type. So there. And that'll be a little bit easier for us to work with because now we say x is less than 0, x is less than 1, so on and so forth. We go ahead and say float x percent equals, I guess these are ints, so we have to cast into floats or we get stupid dividing ground off problems. Like so. Oh, there's no y percent. So then we have to determine what our ground level is, so uh, float ground equals, and now here is the thing where we have to build the function. I'll be right back. Alright, I'm actually going to show myself building this just because uh, it is a little bit of code. The code is very basic, um, but we need to be able to, to show you that 
you know you need to be able to build it so uh, this just creates a curve between three points and gets you the value uh, at a given percent uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, the first value is percent is a uh, one minus percent times val one plus percent times val two and then this we're going to copy it val two to val three and what this does is it creates a nice smooth curve uh, and it's probably very familiar if you've ever done this kind of math before uh, you can also use this with four points but we're only using three uh, so then we just do return p1 uh, we actually want to do the exact same formula again between those two points and basically you just take three points and you turn them into two points and you take two points and you turn them into one point like so okay so up here uh, if you want to team here yeah that's right yeah so up here when we're doing this um, uh, ground system what we want to do is uh, uh, oh, that was, that was correct. Uh, first off, I'm going to rename this to Terrain Heights. Um, they're not really types anymore, are they? So here, we're going to do uh, float. Uh, we need to actually do this three times, and then four times total. So we'll go ahead and do it across the x-axis first, which we will go ahead and do up here, since we already know the x percent. Float x1 equals, or we'll go ahead and say x height 1 equals, what did I name that static function? Curve point. X percent. And then we'll do terrain height 0. Terrain height. I guess I'll just cut and paste. It's hard to type. Two and one pretty basic. And then we just do that two more times. And uh, just change these up so that they are three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. And now we've got where we are on the x-axis as, uh, uh, as an array of three. And then we have to just take the z-axis. So float height equals, or uh, float uh, tile height. We actually, I, I'm a little bit worried that we actually have a, um, call, uh, we actually might have a height variable somewhere else. So I'll just name it tile height, and we'll call it uh, curve point. Uh, Z percent. X height one, X height two, and X height three. And then we just say for int. A, uh, y equals zero. Y is less than tile height. Y plus plus. Perfect. We don't need this anymore. There we are. So, so, so shall we see if that worked okay? Where is it? There it is. Oh, no, we have uh, an error here. Hold on a moment. Oh, of course we have an error. I uh, I made this a two-dimensional array and completely forgot. <laughs> Brilliant, I know. Sorry about that. So... Oh, sorry, it's actually... <sighs> when you do this enough times, it starts to merge together in your head as to exactly which way you're doing it. Alright, so as you can see, we've got stepped landscapes. But we have a couple of screwy errors here. So, the question is, why do we have these particular errors? And the answer is that we're averaging together uh, async, or we don't want to call it asynchronously, we're averaging together a diagonal with the same weight. So, this guy here will take a value from here and from here, 
and from here. So when he actually goes to get his far left value, the mountain is only one third of that. Um, and similarly, this guy grabs from this mountain, and this, I don't know if that's a mountain or not, probably, uh, and then it only gets there. So we actually end up with uh, uh, some very choppy looking terrain, and it looks like we have forgotten to average across the z-axis. There's definitely a bug here. Hold on. Let me check. Shh. Let's pretend I don't make stupid mistakes. There we are. Uh, still got some screwy bugs, but these screwy bugs are more understandable. So what we've got here are mountains create these really sharp ridges along them, and that's because of the way that it works uh, with the averaging. And obviously you are, I've taken, by the way, I've taken off all the brushes, so there's no brushes at all here. So to show you what I mean about what's going on, uh, let's take one of these here. So this particular brick is a lowland brick. Oh no, I guess it's a midland brick. But either way, when it gets to, in, into, the, into this corner, the three pieces of terrain that have the most value are this one, this one, and this one. These two are both mountains, which means that we're going to get a large, sharp rise. But, on the other hand, this mountain here, when it gets to this edge, the most important values are these three, and they're all midlands. So what ends up happening is that we're not actually uh, uh, getting to the right values. We're getting to... The, we're, I'm going too far and meeting these other places uh, further down than, you know, we're both trying to meet each other halfway, or rather, rather than, be, rather than meeting each other halfway, we're both trying to meet each other where we were originally standing. So the answer to that is to simply go ahead and grab a base terrain height, Oh wow, I suddenly can't type, sorry. And then what we'll just do is we'll average it together here. And then we'll go back into Unity and see what it looks like. Perfect! So we do still have occasional weirdities where the corners are overweighted, but um, you know, either live with that or figure out how to fix it on your own. It's just a, a, a it's just a matter of, of how you weight these, and you can feel free to weight it however you'd like in your particular project. But I'm pretty sure we're pushing two gigabytes, so I am actually going to go ahead and just re-enable uh, the brushes. I just turned them off so I would have a clear view of what was going on. And then we will take one last look, and then I'll say, that was episode 7, and I hope you enjoyed it. Now oh, those corners are really heavily weighted. Hmm, I might go fix that for next time, but not this time.